Hi. So, two, three, six in the morning, I would be up, awake, overwhelmed, and restless. I would go through my phone, so many apps, so many lists, 10 ways to be awesome, 15 ways to be happy, 20 things unhappy people need to stop doing right now. But really, all I wanted was someone to talk to. So that was me two years ago, and everything had somehow become a point of no return. And the weight of that was starting to really paralyze me. And I got really annoyed at myself because when I thought about it, I had no real issues, you know? And I really just wanted to be of use to society. I had dreams to change the world, not dreams to be a neurotic mess. So I found myself in a really weird place and I thought, okay, let's find some distractions. And luckily at that time, I was in the middle of doing a play with Checkpoint Theatre. And it was a very welcome distraction. We were supposed to come up with something and we'd be sitting around talking about ideas and I'd go, this is my chance, you know, this is my chance to make real art. I wanted to do a, a big piece, something about, okay, I know, we'll take five big philosophical ideas and then we'll take 13 things you didn't know about the universe and then we'll find a story about a grandfather and an old girl and he'll be teaching her about life by taking care of a goldfish, something like that. Then I was like thinking, we just came up with ideas of just anything, anything outside of myself, but it didn't quite sit. And then one day, the director comes in and he's like, hey, why don't you go and interview all these people in your life? And then you can write about that. And I was like, no, uh, what kind of a crazy idea is that? I mean, the past is in the past for a reason, one. And also, that was the last place I wanted to be in my head again. And also, I mean, I had already been called narcissistic and uh, self-absorbed and uh, pampered. Okay, I'm being dramatic. Actually, it wasn't really me. It was just my entire generation, right? So I was like, it's okay. I would like to think that I'm above knowing what, uh, like caring about what other people think, but I'm not. I still do care. And I was not interested in feeling this stereotype. So I was like, nope, let's move on from that idea. So we sat down, we kept talking, coming up with more ideas, and nothing really seemed to fit. We were running out of time. And I'll admit, I got curious because I was like, you know, I'm feeling really lost right now. I don't seem to be finding any answers anywhere, even in all of the internet. And I thought maybe this could give me some solution. So I said, okay, let's do it. So we made a list of people to interview and it began. I started interviewing people that I had known for a really long time. So I was actually very surprised by some of the things that I found out. I found out that one of my friends was actually this close to committing suicide. I found out that another one, when she was 15 years old, her dad came home one day and said, just give me $10,000. Give me $10,000 and I will gamble one last time. And then I will go jump off a building. Another one, her parents said, can you just stop being lesbian? The family doesn't like it. And I was at a loss of what to say. No listicle had prepared me for this. And when I asked them, have you said this to anyone before? Have you told anyone about this? All of them said to this effect, what for? Everybody has their own problems to deal with. You know, there are bigger things in the world. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. You know, we are so small. The world is so big. We are so insignificant. I get it. They had perspective. And I admired that. So I really don't like it when I get caught up in all the small things in my head, right? I find it very petty. So I had a friend who upset me about 10 years ago, and then I read, <laughs> I read from this list, it said, uh, what was the list? It was um, 10 things that unhappy people do that you shouldn't be doing. And according to them, unhappy people don't know how to let go of their grudges. They choose to hold on to the painful memories and they dwell on the hurt and the pain that was caused. So I was like, okay, that's simple enough. I'll just choose to not dwell in it anymore. Okay, let it go, done. And then after that, they also said, we need to learn how to forget and forgive.
because you deserve to be happy today. I say, yes, I do. So I forgive and I let it go. So we met again over the next few years, once a year around there, and it was all fun, it was great. And then this time around, she was back and we were supposed to meet, and I thought, hey, let's do this interview, you know, because we're older now, we have perspective, I forgave, I forgot, I'm good. So we talked, we sat down and it was fine, you know, she was fine, I was fine, we were chatting, and then after a while I was like, hang on a minute, what? she didn't even think that she was wrong. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, we'll just go with this, so we keep talking some more. She thought she forgave me. And I was like, what? I wasn't prepared for this. I mean, okay, you got, and I, I was getting angry for so many reasons. First, I was like, that's not true. Secondly, I was like, hang on a minute, you said forgive. I forgave. What's going on? Why am I still upset about this thing that happened 10 years ago? I had no idea what was going on. And then, needless to say, the interview didn't go very well. And uh, we ended the conversation. I messaged her a few times after that. She didn't reply. Understandably, I was horrible. Uh, we still don't know who was right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the thing that I regretted most about that conversation is that I had gone in so angry and that I had done this without love. Now, at this point, I was like, I'm done with this process. It's really, I don't see any point in this. I was thinking more than ever before. I was sweating all the small things, and I was becoming more of a neurotic mess, and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And then I just thought back to the time, beginning of the process, I was interviewing my granduncle. I, I didn't interview him. We went to visit him. And we were sitting there, my aunts, two of them, my mom, my dad, and we were just sitting around him, just talking around him about the most banal things, like broken keychains. And I was like, maybe that's why. Maybe we were all afraid of saying the wrong thing and upsetting him, opening this whole can of worms, knowing that he might not have the time to fix it because he was going to, you know? And I thought, this is crazy. This is really nuts, you know. We're so smart. We know how to do so many things. We can calculate how long it takes to travel from one country to another. We can calculate the number of air molecules in this room. We can calculate the number of calories in a spoonful of Nutella. But we have no idea how to talk to someone who is dying. I had no idea how to talk to people who were living. And who am I kidding? I had no idea how to talk to myself. And this, to me, was so strange. You know, the ironic thing is, we stay so far away from our own stories, but we are brought up on other people's stories. In literature, we spend so much time, we dissect each line. We go through and write essays about our different interpretations of a character's journey. From young, we are taught Find a role model, emulate them. Find out about their journey, their successes, their heartbreaks, how they achieve success. Find out about all those things because we learn from each other. We learn from fellow human beings. So then I wondered, when was it time for us to learn from our own stories and from the people around us? Was it only on our deathbed? I had a friend who used to say things like, uh, yeah, it's not your problem, don't think about it, it'll be okay. Then I used to get so angry because I was like, but it's wrong, we need to fix this. You cannot come on our change the world journey because you're just going to bog us all down. <laughs> and then I interviewed him for this interview, I mean for this process, and I found out that when he was nine, his dad had left, and he ended up being the one taking care of the family. And he would teach his younger brother, don't make other people's problems your problems. Understandably so. And the funny thing was, he was a huge sci-fi geek. And anyone who knows sci-fi, they, they like this idea of like the bigger universe, a greater good, finding new frontiers. But somehow, this couldn't apply to him in real life. You know, we're all so different. We all have our different stories. We all have 
different reasons for being the way that we are. And I'm sure that every single person here has something that hurt them, whether small or big, maybe a long time ago, that still hurts them today, that nobody knows about, and no listicle will ever know about, of course. And I just wondered, when before our stories become important, you know? So now you must be wondering, okay, we get it. Everybody has their stories. You have your story, I have my story. So again, why am I spending time on my own story when everybody else is dealing with their own stuff? Now, when you hear stories of people going through things, do you go, okay, this one hurts more, this one hurts less, this one may be same as that. Do you do that? No, right? So why do we do it to ourselves? Every time I hear another story, I go, oh my goodness, what do I have to complain about? Or you hear someone go, and now really, what do you have to complain about? And we do that to ourselves, but why? It makes no sense. And another had another thought, which was this. How would we know how to deal with anyone else's pain if we had no idea how to deal with our own? Now, if I cut myself, and the first thing I do is choose not to dwell on the pain, you'll be fine. It's a small thing. Get over it. If you cut yourself, how would I know what to do? Chances are, I'll go and let it go. Time will heal all wounds. But that's not what I want to do. I want to be there for you. I want to be your friend. I want to listen to your feelings without judgment. And I just want to be there. And I think that's what we all want to do. But how am I going to do that for you if I don't even know how to do that for myself? And I realized that the first person that I needed to learn how to talk to was me. We are so small. The world is so big. Full stop. That's it. Let's leave behind the minimizing.